So Fab, what are we making today? Today we're making orecchiette con cime di rapa. It's a traditional southern Italian dish that can be easily adapted to life on board because it uses the same water to cook the broccoli rapi, the cime di rapa, and the pasta, which is orecchiette. We'll make the orecchiette by hand. Also very important that you know how to do that because oftentimes all you have is flour and water and you can make pasta. I'm Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. We're looking for adventure and freedom in harbors unknown, but for now, we're starting in our own backyard. We sold our dream home of 16 years that we remodeled with love and attention to every detail and moved on to our catamaran Wanderlust, where a couple of dreamers with a longing to explore the world's natural wonders, food, and cultures. To live by the wind, current, and the sun. Click the subscribe button to come along for the ride. The ingredients, 200 grams or eight ounces of flour for the pasta. We're going to use a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, uh, about a half a cup of tepid water. For the sauce, we're going to use olive oil, garlic. In the traditional recipe, you have about five anchovy filet under oil, and then a little bit of hot pepper. We like a little bit of our hot pepper. So both the anchovy and the hot pepper is optional. If you don't like it, you don't have to put it, but we do like it. So we're gonna put it. And then the main protagonist, which is the broccoli rub. Traditionally, in Italy, the pasta is made on the counter. You make a well and you put the oil and the water and you work the pasta. But on a boat, it's probably better to do this inside a bowl, not to make a mess. So, Kristen, the first thing you do, you put the flour. Okay and you make a little well. Now this is not necessary really on, in the bowl because the, the water and the oil are not gonna go anywhere, but uh, if you did it on a counter, you would certainly wanna do that. We put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we put a little bit of salt, not much. Mm -hmm. So this is the olive oil and the flour with some salt. Then we're gonna work the pasta a little bit and we're gonna pour some water when I tell you to, okay? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start stirring this bowl. A little bit of water, a little bit of water. A bit more, that's good, that's good. Pour some water, please. Go ahead. Yes, you pour it all. That's it. And now we work it to make a pasta. It looks like it's pretty good, but if you needed to add some water, you could always add a little water here at this point. But typically half, a half a cup should be plenty for 200 grams for eight ounces of flour. Then you wanna work it. When it doesn't stick anymore, it's ready to work it. And we're gonna do that on, on a uh, cutting board. You could do this on this surface here too if you wanted to. But. Chris, can you hand me the cutting board please? Sure. Thank you. All right, this is a very small cutting board. If you look at Italian grannies doing this, they have a huge board, but that's what we have. We take it in some flowers, please, also. Sure. Okay, we just put a little bit of flowers. Now, flower, let's talk about the flower. In Italy, you would use probably um, coarsely ground semolina flower. Here, we're just using regular bread flour because that's burnable, and that's what we have. But, um, so. Now we work this, just roll it until it gets really nice and pliable. It takes a few minutes and doing this. When you do this, the gluten develops and you, the pasta becomes more elastic. 
So how long do you do this for? Well, it's typically 10, 10, 15 minutes at least to give it like a good work wow. <laughs> so that it develops. <laughs> it's kind of a workout. It develops the gluten that you need to develop. But right now, for example, see, I can look at this. Let's make a little ball, right? It looks pretty hard. But if you do this, see how it pillows? Mm. Comes back right up. If you put your finger in there like this, you see how it comes back. You know, it's kind of pillowing. It's almost ready. So I'm gonna work a few more minutes and then we'll let it rest for 15 minutes. And while this rests, we prepare the broccoli. Now that it's ready, make a little ball. We rest it in a piece of, under a piece of cloth. In Italy, we say un canovaccio. It's rag. We put under a rag here and we let it rest, right? So now we prepare the sauce. So for the sauce, it's really super easy. You take a skillet, which here is our skillet. You put some olive oil, then garlic. I leave the, uh, the skin on it. I crush a little bit so that I can take it out after a little bit. Okay, so this is crushed. All right, so we put the garlic in. We put the anchovies and the hot pepper. Here's the base for our sauce, which is getting ready. So now we're going to clean our broccoli. Broccoli rub need to be washed very well first, or some people call them broccolini, some people call them cimi di rapa. They are really the name is in Italian, cimi di rapa. So we're going to wash this very well. You want to make sure and keep an eye on this stuff. I incline the pan a little bit so all the oil drops to the bottom so it doesn't burn. For this pasta, we just want to use the florets and the leaves. We take the florets and the leaves and uh, we take the big stalks out because they, they're not good for the pasta. We're not gonna throw them away, by the way. We're gonna use them for another purpose, but we just take them out now. So here are broccoli that have been, broccoli rub that have been cleaned. This is the floret. You see this, Kristen? This is like making little yellow flowers. It's kind of like a little old for this dish. In Italy, it probably wouldn't be first choice, but here we're gonna use it. Here you can see that the, the anchovies have completely dissolved in the oil. Here the garlic, see it's cooked. Inside there's no more garlic, just the outside is kind of dissolved as well. Oh wow. See that? So the, fla the flavor of the garlic has gone in the oil, but um, we're gonna take this out. One of our, one of our viewers commented that um, he uses it, he uses his garlic on bread. I think it's a mm. good idea probably very good. So this is ready here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of this and I'm going to cook it in that oil. Not all of it, just some. And reduce it a little bit. The rest, we're gonna boil in the water. But before we do that, we have to make the orecchiette. Okay, so here we go. For the orecchiette, you take this pasta, Take this pasta here, and you cut a little bit of it. Like this much. You see how it's become very elastic, right? You put it back and you keep it covered. See, this is gonna wilt a little bit. Pick up some of that flavor. We're going to make a tube with this pasta, roll it into a tube about the size of my pinky. So, here we go. Kind of need two hands for this button. So we're gonna do this now. Okay. I'm gonna stretch it and roll it until it becomes a long tube about the size of my pinky. Okay. All right. Push a little harder. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta put some some power into it. He's, he's slippery. Slippery, huh? Not as easy he's as it looks. He's a gummy little guy. <laughs> no, it's not as easy as it looks. Oh boy. Let me show you. Okay. Right. I so, need some tips. So you gotta push a little harder. 
This is moving. This is moving. Yeah, yeah. that's a problem. Let's get okay. a cloth. Let's get a cloth. Okay, I'll do it now. Gotta push really hard and stretch. You know? Okay. Let me try. Do I need more flour? Use your fingers, use your fingers. No, less flour. Like this. Roll it. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Pasta grannies, help! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's good enough. So about it says on my pinky. Yep. Okay. So the next step, you cut like this. You go like this. Hmm. Then you turn it around like this on your finger. Hmm. So this is like... Looks like a little hat. Like a little hat. You turn it on your thumb like this. Hmm. All right. So you do that about a million times and then you have your oriquette. <laughs> But it's kind of like a Zen thing. It's a Zen thing to do. The grannies up down in Puglia do them like with their eyes closed. Me, I gotta struggle. <laughs> this is ready here. You see? Nice. Nice, right? That is done. So can I try? Well, let me show you, okay? Okay. Not that I'm very good at this, but. <laughs> well, so you make it look easy. So again. You cut a little piece like that. Okay. You roll it over, you keep your finger there like this. Then you roll it over your thumb like that. Okay. That's the theory of it. All right, I'm gonna give it a whirl. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So. You cut a little piece. Cut a little? A little more, more than that. Yeah. I'm trying to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> then use the, the tip of your finger there. You roll it back on your finger like that. Then flip it over your thumb like that. That's it. And just kind of like mold it over the tip of your thumb. That's kind of the idea. It looks pretty good, actually. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Spectacular. Okay, do it again. Okay. Like this little guy? Yeah. Okay. Use your tip like this. Roll it over, push a little more. You gotta push this a little more. Mm. Then tip, flip it over your thumb. Good. All right, you got a hang of it. See? <laughs> a little capello. Yeah. Little ear, orecchiette means um, little ears. Yeah. I know, but it's near. Yeah, well. If they don't come perfect, it's not the end of the world, you know? Yeah, well, obviously, they're not gonna taste any different. But it's nice if they're, like, the right shape. Yeah, because then they, like, hold the food, right? Yeah, hold the sauce better. This is a good one. Oh, let's see it. This is a good one. Okay. Hmm, that one was perfect. Orecchiette ready. We're gonna put the water to boil the cime di rapa. The water is gonna boil. We put a little salt in it, cover it, so that it boils a little faster. Meantime, we clean up our workspace a little bit. Right, so now, while the water is boiling, we can have a glass of wine. Yep. What are we drinking, Kri? We're drinking a Pinot Noir from the Russian River Valley, which is in Sonoma and it's called Hartford Court. Cheers. It's actually really good. It's really good. So now the water is boiling. Mm. Nice. We're going to put in our broccoli rub. This will take just a few minutes. It's okay. I don't care. 
busy place here and uh, there's a lot of traffic outside today so by the end of the uh, day you can make at least a few of few perfect ricchette some are not as good <laughs> pasta grannies would not approve of this one <laughs> maybe those are the ones that i made <laughs> i don't know i don't think so but some are some are okay some are came out okay you know and then they're, they're flattening out a little bit because they've been sitting here yeah some are good the flavor will be the same <laughs> So how do you know when the rabbi are done? So you look for like a, something with a bigger stem and uh, just pinch it with the film, let's see. Mm. Like this one here. And it's like kind of soft, but not too soft. Kind of soft, but not too soft. soft. Got a few more seconds. So now they're done. So we put the pasta. Mm. Okay. <laughs> strays. Strays that missed the hole. <laughs> and how long do you cook them? The bricchette for like three, four minutes. Oh wow. And yeah, they're fresh. We're gonna saute the bricchette and the broccoli rub in this sauce here when they're done. And those are just the rabi that you sauteed with the anchovies, yeah, the garlic, olive oil, the hot pepper. Correct, just to pick up some of the flavor. Nice. I like to get some water from the pasta and put it in here to feel a little cream with the starches mm. that each other there. I know, it's amazing how it makes, makes it so yeah. creamy. Yeah, put a little bit of water from the, uh, from the broccoli rub and pasta in here. These are ready. We're gonna finish them here. These are ready. They go in here. Then you put a little bit of olive oil on top, and that's it. Beautiful. Orecchiette cimi di rapa. Nice. What do you think about this dish, Christy? Looks amazing. So what's good about this, uh, the broccoli, you can boil them and then squeeze the water out of them mm -hmm. and freeze them. In yeah. fact, we do it all the time, and here's a bowl of it, <laughs> frozen, that we can keep for a long time. Yeah, it's super convenient. So like if you're over in the Bahamas, before you leave, you get a bunch of broccoli rabi and you boil them and then you squeeze the water out and you freeze them. So you have them. And then right. you've got, you know, your flour, water, garlic, the olive anchovies, oil. olive oil. This can also be done vegan or vegetarian mm -hmm. if you don't put the anchovies. Yep. So in fact, we had dinner last night with a friend, with a new friend, <laughs> came to visit us, he's vegan. We can make this dish. Yep. All right, let's try it. Delish. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And it's super simple. Super simple. So making the uh, making the it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, and it takes time. It takes a lot of time. But yeah. Otherwise, it's great. Ah, uh, so we're finally back back at the dock. The mm. boat was out for like what, ten days. Almost two weeks. Get some work done, uh, some water to work. Mm -hmm. Things are coming together. Yep, exactly. And that's something important to note. So, if whether you buy a new boat or a used boat, you have to plan for time to do work on the boat because when you get it, even if it's new, in our experience, there are some kinks to be worked out. There are a few things that need to be warranty work that needs to be done regardless of whether the boat is new or mm -hmm. it's used. So it takes time before the boat is ready for. A real voyage right so if we had planned to immediately go over to the bahamas we would have kind of been in trouble so yeah. it's a really good thing that we planned to we got the boat and then planned to be in florida for like the next year right yes yes 
And so now the date is approaching. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, maybe two, three months and we'll mm -hmm. be able to shovel off. Yep. That was a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you all for following us, for watching our videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave us a comment down below, especially if you make this recipe and share it with a friend. Let us know how it comes out. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks.